Welcome to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy, and here is all of the Easter eggs, references, and little things that you might have missed in the second trailer for WandaVision. So of all the upcoming Marvel TV shows, this is actually the one that I'm most excited for. I'm a huge fan of old sitcoms. I love the premise of this show. I just can't wait for it to happen. So that being said, let's dive into these Easter eggs. The trailer opens like a TV turning on and everything is covered in old TV static. This is showing that we are slowly venturing into the pocket reality that Wanda has created. So in the comics, Wanda Maximoff has the power to create hexes and bend reality. In fact, in the storyline House of M, she actually created an entire alternate universe where her father, Magneto, was the emperor of the world. We're seeing something similar in this series, but I'll get into more detail as we go along. She's speaking to her nosy neighbor Agnes, played by the great Catherine Hunt. Now, everybody's theorized, and I think this is correct, that she's actually Agatha Harkness. Agatha is a witch in the comics who trains Scarlet Witch how to use her powers. But in this show, it seems like she's following the trope of the nosy neighbor next door. Agnes mentions that she's single, and then Wanda just decides that she wants a companion. So she creates a wedding ring for her and Vision out of nowhere, just like she's created this perfect life for them inside a pocket reality. The creation of the wedding ring also implies that she brought the vision back to life, as we'll see later in the trailer. I love this line. Well, I assure you, I'm married to a man, a human one. So this is playing off the sitcom Bewitched about a perfectly normal suburban couple, except the mom, Samantha, was a witch. Now in this show, the mom is obviously a witch and the vision is a robot. So they have even more things to hide from their nosy neighbor. And by the way, Agnes is also inspired by the nosy neighbor from Bewitched, Mrs. Kravitz. And how sweet was this scene where Wanda's foot steps into frame and Vision sees her for the first time? Wanda. What's it mean? So what we see in this trailer is moving through different eras of television. This early part in black and white is like the 1950s and early 1960s, calling back to shows like Father Knows Best, Leave It to Beaver, and The Dick Van Dyke Show. Vision is even dressed in a sweater, a lot like something that Ward Cleaver would have worn. So I get the idea that Wanda loved watching old American sitcoms when she was growing up in Sokovia, and that she probably saw American life, the American dream, through the lens of these TV shows. So of course, when it comes time for her to create her own perfect dream reality, she visualizes it through this lens. You'll notice most of the trailer, all these opening sitcom clips, are in the 4-3 aspect ratio, just like old TV shows. So then there's a scene where she magically pushes the beds together, leaving their slippers behind on the floor. Actually, this has a lot of symbolic meaning. In the early days of television, married couples were always shown sleeping in separate twin beds. To show otherwise would be indecent. But then gradually, shows like Mary Kay and Johnny, The Brady Bunch, and The Munsters started to actually show married couples sharing a bed together. So this is an indication that Wanda's sitcom world world is moving forward through time, just like the sitcoms themselves. <laughs> We see the overhead shot of the suburban cul-de-sac. Now, this cul-de-sac has recently been built. You can tell because there's no trees and they've yet to build houses in some of these spots. In the 1950s, people started to move away from the cities into the suburbs to raise their families. This was sold to them as the American dream. So again, this is Wanda's American dream, to be in the suburbs as part of an American sitcom, raising a family. Now, all through this, you see her manipulating things and moving stuff around. They actually did this with wires, duplicating the techniques used on the show Bewitched, which is really cool. But then, the world gets colorized, and as it becomes colorized, it's more complicated. It's slowly becoming no longer her ideal dream as it moves closer to present day and actual reality. Notice the world around them colorizes before they do, showing that they need to change in order to catch up to the world around them. This is a lot like the medium of television itself. In the 1960s and 70s, the world had changed drastically from the 1950s, but sitcoms were a little slow to catch up and be more inclusive as to the reality around them. All of a sudden, they're in clothing that's more appropriate for a 1970s show like The Brady Bunch. So in this scene, Wanda's reclining on the sofa, noticed that now she's pregnant, and she's reading Glamorous Magazine, which is a spin on the magazine Glamour. This is so funny, it has articles like Moroccan swimwear, lovely legs you can take anywhere. It's like she's created this ideal reality around her, and now she's focusing on this ideal reality that the magazine has created. And notice the model's dress on the cover is very similar to the Scarlet Witch's costume from the comics. And again, in all these early scenes, we see them living a perfectly happy life. She's pregnant, they're dancing, and this house reminds me a lot of the Bradys and the Brady Bunch. And notice the cul-de-sac is more populated than before, just like their family is becoming more populated as they're preparing for babies. Notice the mobile over the crib has butterflies, which suddenly become real and fly away. This is showing that Wanda is able to make inanimate objects come alive. 
which is what she does with her twins in the comics. So, brief explanation of this. Vision and Scarlet Witch get married in the comics, and Wanda basically creates two twins named Billy and Tommy out of nowhere. Later on, she found out they were fake, and she went crazy, and then the whole House of M thing happened. I'm not sure if they're going to do that in this show. But it is clear from what we've seen in the trailers that she does create children out of nowhere, and I think their growth is going to be accelerated with the passage of time that we see in the show, and they're going to become the heroes that they are in the comics, Speed and Wiccan, and they're going to form the Young Avengers. We actually made a video on that that you should check out if you have time. And also, turning objects into magical butterflies might remind you of this moment from Infinity War when Doctor Strange faced Thanos. <laughs> I also like the little detail here that she's eating orange slices because she's pregnant and she would have cravings. Then we see Agnes on a bike, very reminiscent of Mrs. Gulch, who becomes the Wicked Witch of the West and the Wizard of Oz. Again, it's a subtle hint that she's actually playing Agatha Harkness, a witch. When Vision greets the neighbors, notice now he's no longer dressed as a 1950s house husband. He's dressed as a 1970s dude with long hair and a leather jacket. Now, this guy is called Herb in the subtitles. I'm thinking maybe he's Herbert Wyndham, the comic book character The High Evolutionary. Very complicated backstory, but basically he's a scientist obsessed with creating the perfect race. He created the new men who are human animal hybrids. So in the comics, Wanda and Pietro were both born at his citadel where they were touched by a demon and became the demon's conduit into the real world. Comics are weird and I love them. Now notice Herb is with Agnes, implying that they are a couple. It could be that they're the people who are manipulating Wanda into creating this artificial world. Then we see Tiana Paris as Monica Rambeau. You might remember her as a little girl in the movie Captain Marvel. Who are you? I don't know. So she doesn't know who she is, but I think I know. She's a S.W.O.R.D. agent. Now, S.W.O.R.D. is an agency in the comics that's kind of like S.H.I.E.L.D., but in space. They protect Earth specifically from extraterrestrial threats, and they're returning in this show. Now, in the previous trailer and later in this one, we see Wanda's pocket reality is actually lined with S.W.O.R.D. agents. So I think they sent Monica in to investigate. This could also be an origin story for Monica Rambeau, because in the comics, she gains her own powers and becomes the hero Captain Marvel before taking on the name Photon. Now, notice this development now has true trees, more houses, everything is getting fuller and more complicated, unlike the sparse development that we saw back when it was in black and white. And notice that when reality starts to change, it's through the lens of TV glitches or changing the channel. It's like Wanda does have this power inside her, but she has to visualize it as changing the channels on a TV set. And then suddenly we go to widescreen as we're moving closer to actual reality. See, Wanda doesn't realize that she's doing this. Like I said before, she's being manipulated by Agnes or Herb or this guy, the beekeeper, who I'm thinking just might be Mephisto. He's kind of like the devil in Marvel Comics. In fact, in the Loki trailer right here, you can see a stained glass window of a very demonic looking figure, implying that maybe, just maybe, Mephisto is the big bad for phases four, five, and six. So Vision starts to realize that something is off. In this scene, we see kids trick-or-treating. Now, in the last trailer, we saw Vision and Scarlet Witch dressed in comic accurate costumes. This is probably because their twins are little boys at this point, and Vision is out taking them trick-or-treating. This is also the scene in the previous trailer that we saw saw him float above the city when he started to suspect that he was in a pocket reality. Am I dead? No. Why would you think that? Because you are. He might have been tipped off to this by all these people glitching like they're in the Matrix. And if you recognize this actress, she's appeared in the MCU before. This is your mom. So this is part of the same sequence when Agnes was in her car dressed as a witch. So it could be that she's amplifying the Scarlet Witch's powers without realizing it, and that she's being manipulated by Mephisto. And then we hear sword agents communicating with Wanda. Wanda, Wanda. Now this, again, implies that Agnes or someone else is the one who's pulling Wanda's strings. Somebody is testing her powers or wants to create a pocket reality or wants the vision brought back to life. Then we see this portal that seems like it's made of TV static. This is what we saw Monica Rambo getting expelled from in the last trailer. This is the invisible barrier that surrounds Wanda's pocket reality. Then we get a few flashes of their domestic life, including a shot of them holding a tiny trophy. I'm guessing because they won some kind of dance contest. And then the trailer really hammers home into reality with sword agents and Humvees coming up to this perimeter. This is our home. Then let's fight for it. So now it's modern day. They realize they have powers and they want to fight for the life they've created because they're also defending their twins, who remember we saw as babies in the last trailer. Then we see Jimmy Woo from Ant-Man and the Wasp. Note the logo on his jacket looks very much like the sword logo from the comics. And there's helicopters flying around the perimeter. Now it's red, like the energy that Wanda lets off from her hands, implying that it's like a fire raging out of control. See, even though Wanda and Pietro got their powers from the Mind Stone, they actually take on the abilities of different stones. Pietro's powers came from the 
space stone, note the blue energy streaks when he ran, but Wanda takes her powers from the reality stone, the ether, which if you'll remember was a red goo, much like the red goo that's surrounding this area. We also see Darcy Lewis, who is also a sword agent. Remember, she was in the first two Thor movies. Her experience working with all those extraterrestrial events probably made her an ideal recruit for sword. And then we get the big reveal, the mind stone exploding from the crystal of Loki's scepter. So Wanda stares at it, and I think this is the moment when she created this pocket reality. So remember, the stones are linked together. They're all part of the same singularity that existed before the universe was born. And in Infinity War, it was revealed that they work on the same harmonic frequency. That's why Wanda was able to destroy the Mind Stone. So if this is the case, then it means that characters like Captain Marvel and Wanda actually retain the remnants of the stone's energy, which means that even though the stones are destroyed, they're kind of living on through these characters. If this is the case, it means that Wanda would have a connection to the energy of all the stones. So given that her powers let her bend reality, she would be able to pull the energy of the Mind Stone together and collect it in one spot and resurrect the vision. The button at the end of the trailer is this scene. Well, I think we handled that well. And notice the laughter in the background. That's because they actually did film the early episodes of this season in front of a live studio audience. Well guys, that's all the Easter eggs that I found, but if you found any, at me on Twitter or let me know in the comments below. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.